Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this new series, we're going to be learning about C++, starting from the very basics, and getting to know the language and some of the more modern and advanced features. And along the way, we'll also be looking at some cool projects and ways in which we can use C++. Now, before we get into some of the more advanced topics, we really have to start off with a good foundation, which means we really have to understand what C++ is and how we can write basic programs uh, using the language. So I think a great place to start off is just trying to answer the question of what is C++, right? At least in some simple form, how can we describe the language? And I typically do this in just a single sentence, and that's that C++ is a compiled language that is statically typed. Uh, but even in that one sentence, there's quite a lot to unpack, right? What does it mean to be a compiled language? Um, what does it mean for a language to be statically typed? And what even really is a type, right? So let's try to break that down, right? So first of all, what does it mean for a language to be a compiled language? Well, all this really means is that uh, we can't execute our source code directly, right? So we write some code in C++, we can't directly run that code. We have to pass it off to another tool, a piece of system software, called a compiler. And it's a job of that compiler to translate our source code into something that we can execute, uh, something that we typically call an executable, right? That we can run uh, on our processor. And it's in the language that our processor understands. Now, for example, on this machine, this Linux machine, um, I would give, say, my high-level C++ source code to a compiler driver like G++, which is part of the GNU compiler collection, GCC. Um, and G++ would perform all the actions necessary, so things like pre-processing, compilation, assembly, linking, to translate my C++ into an executable that we can then run uh, uh, on the machine. Okay, so that's what we mean by a compiled language. Now, what about the second part of that sentence, right? That C++ is statically typed. Um, and what really even is a type? So inside of our programs, we have a lot of values, right? Um, and for every single value we have in our program, all those values have an associated type. And those types really just say what that value is, right? Is it a, a, a floating point number? Is it a positive or negative whole number? So an integral type, um, or is it some kind of complex data structure? And what are the rules around using that particular value, right? What operators can we use and what do those operators do? So that's what we kind of mean by types. Now, when we say that something is statically typed, right, or language is statically typed, what we just really mean is that once we assign a type to something, that type can't change. It's static. And it's something that uh, the compiler needs to know about, right, at compilation time. It's not something that can change at runtime. So if I say that something is a vector or something is an integral type, uh, the type of that thing, maybe it's a return value, maybe it's a variable, that's not going to change at runtime, right? And the compiler needs to know what that type is when it's doing compilation so it can generate the right code. So that's what we kind of mean by a statically typed language. So now that we have a little bit of background on what C++ is, let's get into the basics of writing C++ programs. And I think a, an, another great place to start here is with uh, the most simple program we can write in C++, which also just so happens to be the core of pretty much every C++ program. And that's just going to be a main function. So let's go ahead and get started over here. And we'll create a new file called main.cpp. So CPP is just a C++ extension. You might also see .cc used. Either of these extensions uh, works perfectly fine for C++ code. Now, uh, for my particular you know, uh, setup over here, I'm going to be you know, opening and creating and editing these files using the text editor Vim. But feel free to use whatever editor or IDE works for you. So something like Visual Studio Code is a great option. So let me go ahead and open up main.cpp. So our new C++ file, um, and inside of here, we'll just write a very simple main function. So it'll be int main with an empty parameter list, and then some curly brackets here, right? And that'll be our function body. Um, and then inside of our curly brackets, we'll do return zero, right? So this is the most simple program we can write, right? It's just a main function. So let's try to understand a bit about what's going on here. So first of all, when we say a main function, what do we really mean by function? Now, a function is just a named body of code, right? So whenever we say call this function, right, by whatever name we've given it, um, we'll execute all the code inside of the function body. 
And that's just everything within these curly brackets, right? We'll start executing the statements in that function body. And in this case, the only thing we have in the function body is a single return zero statement. So return here is just a keyword in C++. A keyword is just a word that's reserved by the language that has a special meaning. So in this case, it means that this function is going to return a value. Um, and that value in this case is just zero in our statements in C++ end with a semicolon, right? So that's our function body. Now up here, we have the name of our function. So we've given it uh, the name main here. We've given it a return type, right? So it's a typed language, a statically typed language. Um, so here we're saying that our function, right? After we call it, it's going to return some type. And that type is an int, right? An integer. Uh, integer is just a positive or negative whole number. And then uh, over here, we have some open and close parens here. Now inside of these parens is something that we call a parameter list. And that's all the things that we want to pass into this function. So if we want to use some extra values in the function, right, when we call it, we can pass some extra values through this parameter list here. But in this case, we're not passing anything. So we just have an empty parameter list. Um, our function does not take anything. It just returns um, this zero right here, right, this integer. So that's a little bit of background on functions. Now, we're going to be talking about functions a lot later, but there's something very special about this function, right, this main function. And like I said earlier, um, this is really the core of every C++ program. So why exactly did I say that? What makes this main function so special? Well, main is a special function in C and C++ because it's logically where execution begins for every C++ application. So after I compile my code and I run that executable, where does my program start executing? Well, it starts executing at the main function, right? Wherever that function might be inside of all of our source files. So logically, our program starts execution at main, right? So that's what makes main so special. Right. Um, so that's why it's the core of every single C++ program. Now, there are some caveats around that regarding, say, initialization of things like globals, uh, but we'll get into that in later videos. But we can just think about main as where a program begins executing. OK, so now that we have our basic program here, the most simple thing we can write in the core of our C++ applications, uh, let's go ahead and compile this and run this. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here and then we can go ahead and compile this using a compiler driver like G++, which, like I said, is part of the GNU compiler collection, GCC. So we'll do G++, pass in uh, main.cpp, um, which is our input source file, and then we'll give our output executable name. So we'll do dash O, and we'll just call our executable main. So after that, if we go ahead and list the files in our directory, we see we have an executable and our source file right here. So we translated. Our, our source file into an executable, right, through using our compiler driver. And if we go ahead and do ls-la, we can see that unlike our source file, we have execute permissions, right, on this executable, so we can run this file. So let's go ahead and run this file, right, this executable. So we'll do just dot slash main, or we'll just call main uh, this executable. And we see that nothing really happens, right, which is somewhat expected. All we had is a main function that returns zero. Now, uh, a very obvious question people will have is what happens when I'm returning zero? Where is that value going? Well, the return value of main is typically used to signify, you know, whether or not a program completed successfully. Zero generally meaning that a program completed without errors, right? And we can actually see that return value from the command line using something like echo dollar sign question mark. So we can get the return value for the uh, uh, last executable we ran. So in this case, we see a return value zero, but we can of course go just back into our main.cpp, open this up, and we can return a different value, right? So we can return something like 12 instead. Now remember, C++ is a compiled language, so now that I've made this change into my source code, I have to recompile and generate a new executable. So we'll go ahead and do that again. We'll call G++ on main.cpp, and just overwrite our executable main here. We'll just create a new executable with this new source. All right, so we have our new executable here, and we can go ahead and run main again, and we can go ahead and run echo again to get that return code. 
and we see exactly what we specified inside of our main function, right? We returned 12 this time, and we got 12 when we did this echo right here, right? So we can see the return value from our program. And like I said, this is typically just used uh, as an exit code, right? To say whether or not our program completed successfully, right? Zero meaning we completed successfully. All right. So that's a brief introduction to um, C++ as a language, right? That's kind of what C++ is at its core, right? Why is the main function, you know, kind of special? And how do we compile and run basic programs? Now, of course, there's a lot more that we're going to be getting into as the series goes along. And there's, of course, um, some references that I'd like to point out. So probably the best reference site that I could point you to is this cppreference.com, right? This is basically the ground truth if you want to learn more um, about C++ and the C++ standards. So there are many different versions of the language as well uh, that we'll be talking about as things go along, going from C++ 98 all the way up to the much more modern C++ 23, right? And different compilers support um, slightly different things in terms of these standards, right? Which is something we'll talk about in later videos. And of course, if you want to, you know, access any of the code uh, related to this series or uh, the other projects that I have going on, you can find that at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.